afternoon. Uh, Caitlin Payton. Yes, uh, Ian, you are Caitlin Payton. Um, thanks for that. Um, and uh, Ms. Payton, you're here today to make a first appearance. Uh, you've been charged in case number 2021-CR111 uh, with uh, three criminal counts. I'm gonna go over those with you at this point. Uh, in count one, you're charged with uh, distribution of marijuana, uh, which uh, stems from a report on June 30th, 2021. Uh, and it claims uh, that you did uh, possess or uh, distribute uh, with intent to distribute, yeah, uh, distribute or possess with intent to distribute uh, less than 25 grams of marijuana. This is a severity level four uh, drug felony and it's punishable by up to 51 months in the state penitentiary and a fine of up to $300,000. And in count two, you've been charged with battery of a law enforcement officer uh, from that same date. Um, claims that you uh, intentionally caused physical contact uh, with Sergeant George Anaveras, uh, who works for the city of Kingman as a police officer uh, while he was engaged in the performance of his official duty. Uh, that's a class A misdemeanor and it's punishable by up to a year in the county jail and a fine of up to $2,500. And in count three, uh, you've been charged with possession of drugs paraphernalia, uh, which in this case is a plastic box, marijuana grinder, scale, and straws. Uh, this is a class B misdemeanor and it's punishable by up to six months in the county jail and a fine of up to $1,000. If you would be convicted of any of these uh, crimes, you could be uh, sentenced to serve uh, these sentences uh, concurrently, which means you'd serve them all at once, or consecutively, which means you'd serve one and then start the next one. Uh, do you understand what you've been charged with and the possible penalties? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, and, and all I'm asking is if you understand the charges. Uh, and these are only allegations. So you have the right to have a trial on this matter where the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you committed these offenses and you have the right to defend yourself in public court and you have the right to have legal counsel. And if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. What we're here today is to figure out how you'd like to proceed on this uh, case and especially when it comes to legal counsel. Uh, I am a court appointed attorney. Okay, and what they're going to do is they're going to give you an application uh, there at the jail and, and go ahead and fill that out. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, ask you a couple of questions and, and see if we can't uh, uh, get this moving. Uh, are you currently employed? Um, no. Okay, and so being unemployed, you don't have any income. So I'm going to find that you... Um, qualify for a court appointed attorney and I'm going to appoint Mike Johnston to represent you. Uh, they will give you Mr. Johnston's um, contact information there at the jail and you'll be able to contact him and then I'm going to set you for your next hearing uh, on Thursday at 1.30 uh, in the afternoon and uh, that will be July 8th. And in the meantime, that'll give you a couple of days. You can contact Mr. Johnston and uh, figure out how you want to proceed with this. Uh, do you have any questions? Um, what do I need to do to get like a copy of the reports? Okay, you don't, you, do you have a copy of the complaint? Yeah. Okay, and then um, contact Mr. Johnston and he will get all the discovery and get that to you, okay? And then you can also talk to him about uh, uh, bond and things like that. And otherwise, we'll see you in two days. All right, thank you. Thank you.
McFadden next, Judge. Yes, thank you. Are you Tracy McFadden? This is, yeah, this is her. Um, Ms. McFadden, uh, you're here today to make a first appearance. Uh, you've been charged with two criminal counts in case number 2021-CR-110. And I'm going to go over those charges with you. Okay. Um, in count one, you've been charged with felony theft. This is from a report made on June 27th of this year. Uh, claiming that you uh, obtained or exerted unauthorized control over property worth at least $1,500, but less than $25,000. And in this case, that involved a Toyota Corolla. And it also claims that you, um, that your intent was to permanently deprive the owner, Gail Garrett, of the possession, use, or benefit of that property. This is a severity level nine felony and is punishable by up to five, up to 17 months in the state penitentiary and a fine of up to $100,000. And in count two, you're charged with um, counterfeiting of currency. Um, and it uh, claims that you unlawfully possessed uh, a note obligation or security of the United States with a total value of less than $25,000, knowing that such an obligation or security had been made, forged, or altered. This is a severity level eight felony, and it's punishable by up to 23 months in the state penitentiary and a fine of up to $100,000. Now, if you were to be found guilty of either of these, uh, you could be sentenced uh, to serve uh, these sentences uh, concurrently, which means you'd serve them all at once, or consecutively, which means you'd uh, finish one and then start the next. Uh, do you understand what you've been charged with and the possible penalties? Yeah, and I'm already, I'm already a felon, so. Well, hold on just a moment uh, before we get in uh, to talking about this too much is, um, uh, these are only allegations and you have the right to have a trial on this matter where the, state has to, where the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you did indeed commit these offenses. And you also have the right to have legal counsel. And if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. Uh, what do you, what are your plans on legal counsel? Um, I don't have the money to get legal counsel right now. Um, so if I can get a court appointed attorney, that would be great. But I am okay. planning on fighting this case. Um, Excuse me? I am planning on fighting this case. Okay. And, and, and before you uh, talk too much about the case, I, I, I want to uh, uh, also let you know that this is a public hearing. And uh, I, I wouldn't want you to say anything about the case that might be, that might incriminate you or might be able to be used against you later. So I want to warn you on that. Uh, they will give you uh, an application for a court-appointed attorney, but I'm going to ask you a couple of questions now uh, so we can get this moving along. Um, 
are you currently employed? Part-time. Okay. And where are you employed? Um, I work for a in-home health care. He's in Halstead. So I do in-home okay. health care for a disabled man. About, about how much do you make per month? Starting out, um, like 700, 800, not much. Okay. And do you have any um, uh, dependents? No. I do okay. have an apartment though. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so I'm going to find that you uh, do meet uh, the qualifications for a court appointed attorney based on your income. And when they, and, and you do need to fill out the application because we need to have that on file. Uh, mm -hmm. But just answer the questions just like you did to me today. And uh, I'm going to appoint Mandy Stevenson to represent you. And I'm going to set you for your next court hearing uh, this Thursday in, in two days, uh, July 8th at 9.30 in the morning. Okay. And then they will give you Ms. Stevenson's contact information and you can get in touch with her and um, uh, but be sure and get in touch with her before Thursday uh, morning. Do you have any questions? Um, the only question I really have is I am on parole right now. And so I've been having a really hard time getting a hold of my parole officer because I do want to inform her that I am in custody. Okay. I don't, do I need to get a hold of my attorney about this? Like, do I need to tell my attorney? Because I do yes. want to, yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, she, I'm sure she's going to PV me, but I want to be honest with her. You know what I'm saying? Because your, your, your parole officer is like your lifeline. So no, I understand. No, I, I, I understand. And uh, get, get in touch with Ms. Stevenson and she'll help you work that out. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, you should you should be able to call your parole officer. Yeah. Um, and then I had one more question. So like with me already being a prior felon, do you not OR out? Are you going to keep me in here because I'm already a prior felon or... Uh, that is something that you need to talk to your attorney about. Um, we can, uh, and, and, and we can take up, uh, uh, your bond on Thursday. Okay. But that's something, and, and, and your attorney can help you out right now. Uh, you could ask for a bond modification, but then I'd have to, uh, I'd have to, we'd have to, we still have to get with your attorney and, uh, the prosecutor and talk about it. And so she can get this done a lot faster than, uh, I can just try and uh, get everybody together. And, and since we have the hearing at nine 30 on Thursday, we can talk about it then. Okay. Thank you. And we'll see you a couple of days. So Ms. Baker, you want to bring in Ms. Baker next? Yes, I will. Thank you. Are you Madeline Baker? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Baker, you're uh, here today to make a first appearance. Uh, you've been charged in case number 2021-CR-112 uh, with two criminal counts. I'm going to go over those with you right now. Uh, in count one, you've been charged with distributing marijuana uh, stemming from a report on June 30th of this year, uh, claiming that you um, had a quantity of less than 25 grams of marijuana with uh, the intent to distribute uh, that. And that is a level four drug felony and it's punishable by up to 51 months in the state penitentiary and a fine of up to $300,000. And in count two, you've been charged with possession of drug paraphernalia 
Uh, in this case, it's a plastic box, uh, marijuana grinder, scales and straws. Uh, also from that same date of June 30th. And this is a class B misdemeanor and it's punishable by up to six months in the county jail and a fine of up to $1,000. Do you understand what you've been charged with and the possible penalties? Yes, sir. And uh, these are only allegations. You have the right to have a trial on this matter where the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you've committed these offenses and that you, and you have the right to defend yourself in public court. You also have the right to have legal counsel. And if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. Um, do you have any uh, plans on obtaining legal counsel or do you need the court to appoint you an attorney? Okay, I'm going to, uh, they're going to give you an application to fill out and uh, you need to fill that out and so we can have it on file, but I'm going to ask you a couple of questions so we can get this moving along. Um, do you, are you currently employed? No. Okay, and since, since you're unemployed and don't have any income, I'm going to find that you qualify for a court appointed attorney and I'm going to appoint Mandy Stevenson to represent you. I'm also gonna set you, and they will give you Ms. Stevenson's contact information and you can uh, get a hold of her and uh, figure out how you wanna proceed with the case. And I'm going to set your next court, court appearance uh, in two days on Thursday at 9.30 in the morning. And uh, so they'll give you your contact information. Be sure and contact her uh, before you uh, come to court on um, Thursday morning. Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of days. Thank you. Afternoon. Are you David Colbeck? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, Mr. Colbeck, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, Colbeck. Well, thank you. Mr. Colbeck, uh, you have been charged in case number 2021 CR 113 with three criminal counts. I'm going to go over those with you right now. In count, one, in count one, you've been charged with possession of methamphetamine uh, from a report made on July 3rd. 
uh, of this year, uh, claiming uh, that you had um, uh, in your possession uh, methamphetamine. And this is a uh, level five drug felony and is punishable by up to 42 months in the state penitentiary and a fine of up to $100,000. Uh, in count two, you're charged with possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, in this case, a syringe also from uh, a report on July 3rd and uh, claiming that syringe was used or intended uh, for unlawful use in um, drug use. Uh, this is a class B misdemeanor and is punishable by up to six months in the county jail and a fine of up to $1,000. And in count three, you're charged with lewd and lascivious conduct, exposing your sex organ to someone who is uh, at least 16 years old or older. Uh, this is also a class B misdemeanor, also punishable by up to six months in the county jail and a fine of up to $1,000. Do you understand what you've been charged with and the possible penalties? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, these are only allegations. You have a right to have a trial on this matter where the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you committed these offenses and you have the right to defend yourself in public court. Uh, you also have the right to have uh, legal counsel, and if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. Um, and really what we're here today is to figure out how you'd like to proceed on this case, especially as it pertains to getting an attorney. Yes, I, I'd like to uh, request a, 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 I can't afford an attorney, so I'd have to get a court appointed. But I'd like to uh, request a, a no, or bond, sir. I have never been in, in any trouble before in my whole life. Okay. And I don't recall a, a lot of this. Uh, let, let's, take, let's, let, let's take first things first. Um, uh, they're going to give you at the jail a, um, an application for a court appointed attorney, and, and I need you to fill that out, and they'll get it back to us, and we need to have that on file. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions first. Are you currently employed? No, sir. I'm on Social Security disability, and I have been since 2006. Okay. Thank you uh, for that information. I'm going to find uh, uh, that you do qualify for a court-appointed attorney, and I'm going to appoint Mandy Stevenson to represent you. And um, I'm going to set your court, your next court date, in two days, this Thursday at 9:30 a.m. And they will give you. And, and like I said fill out that application, just answer the questions it, like you did to me today. And then they're going to give you Ms. Stevenson's contact information. And mm -hmm. as far as your bond goes, it, it, would, uh, uh, it would be better if you talk to her about that. She can get that done a lot quicker uh, than I can because I would have to get together the prosecutor and your attorney and it'll, it'll be easier if you just contact her. And she can help you. And if uh, nothing else, I'll see you uh, Thursday at 9.30 in the morning. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you have any other questions? I don't believe so, Your Honor. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. And we'll see you in a couple of days and you contact Ms. Stevenson, okay? Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I think that's all for today. Thank you very much.